Hi. <laughs> All right, let me cut over to you. All right, we got you going. We have Tiffany on here. I, she can't see my Hi. video right now, unfortunately, because I can't do two video feeds at once on my computer. I'm a little archaic over here. But how are you doing today? I know you've been upset today. Um, well, over here in Hungary, um, I couldn't go to a store to buy cigarettes because the tobacco shop closes at 8 o'clock here. So okay. I had to take a bus 20 minutes to go buy a pack of cigarettes and then come back and um, force myself to eat dinner so I've been fucking sick to my stomach. <laughs> well, I think anyone would be sick to their stomach considering, you know, everything that you've been through and... But let's start from the beginning, because I, I would like for the audience to know what's going on with you in your own words. So um, let's start from from the very beginning as far as your encounter with Derek Hay. First off, how did you even find out about LA Direct Models? Um, well, I researched who were the biggest porn stars in the industry, and I saw that they were represented by um, Derek Hay. So I'm like, oh, Derek Hay um, makes big porn stars cool. Maybe it's someone I can give a shit about my career for once. And so um, at the time I was blonde, and Derek loves blondes. And so, um, you know, I went in, and he's just like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to get you a bunch of work, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to pay for you to fix your hair. And then I... Um, so I was pretty much in, um, signed the contract, and I started getting good work, and I'm hearing a bunch of feedback right now, sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Just keep going, it sounds great on this end. I'm just going to turn this on mute so I don't hear the feedback. Okay. Um, and then, um, pretty much what happened was, um, I started getting less work, and I'm like, Derek, like, why are you booking me less? at the time I did support my family and you know I gave them you know a little over thirty thousand dollars and you know my mom was you know about to lose the house and she actually did lose the house that housed my sister and my three-year-old nephew and um, my attorney also has these on file with me emailing him telling him that I need to get out of my contract he's starving me he's doing this he's doing that and um how many months? Essentially, you, how, how many one months? One sheet a month to you just pay enough for my rent, which is a thousand dollars. How many months? And, in would you uh, say it he took? Oh, she can't hear that me. That when I did arrive, you know, the sleazy hotel room, and you know, there was a little camera that people, you know, filmed their their families with at Disneyland, and I'm just like, okay, and I still haven't seen the content, so he sent me to um. Uh, which was um, actually an illegal escort job and also um, he suggested me, TLC, to get caught up on my agency fees as well as paying for, you know, food in my stomach and also he told me, you know, hey, this will help you get back on, on your job and I'm just like, dude, this is fucking wrong, like, this is just wrong and I'm like, private porn shoots, like, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> my bad. And, um, pretty much, um, it led to all this to happen, and I purposely waited to come out about this just because I wanted to, um, you know, make sure my, nothing, no one goes after my family, make sure, um, no one finds out where I live with my tax forms, and mm -hmm. everything that I have that document legally are addresses I am no longer a mess. Okay, now, how long, how many um, months would you say you were in when you first started um, realizing that you weren't getting booked and that Derek was trying to um, starve you to where you ended up having to um, go through the luxury companion? Um, it was towards the beginning of May. Okay. In the April, beginning of May. And um, what I do want to share with my audience is that yesterday um, Tiffany actually showed me some emails directly from the Luxury Companion 
to where Tiffany didn't even realize that she was still listed, that her listing on there was active as of this moment. I'm pretty sure that that listing is still active. And in the emails that Tiffany received from the Luxury Companion, they were saying that her listing was not active anymore, but it in fact is. We have the screen caps of that. We have the direct active link. Don't, don't forget they're over 1.5 years old. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, you know, we have been doing a little bit of investigative work over here, and um, there's no reason for Tiffany to still be listed on Luxury Companion. But what I do want to do is read you an email and this is an email that be, because um, Desi Fox, also known as Diana Graham Mason, who is currently an activist as I am in regards to getting the truth out there about the porn industry. I'm going to read an email in regards to... Darling, um, you're breaking up really bad. I'm breaking up? All right, just I might have to reconnect with you, but I'm just going to read this email in regards to why most likely the Luxury Companion has left your listing online. So, <clears throat> and again, this is an email written by Desi Fox, a.k.a. Diana Graham Mason. Um, it's a two-pronged approach for pimps. They bait and switch callers who want to book a girl no longer active. And see, that's the situation that you that you were in. You are no longer active, but they but just keep listening. They did that to us at Type 9 while we were in LA. She's referring to herself and her daughter who were both in porn. They were telling them we went back to Florida, but they had someone else to fit the role for us. By keeping the girls listed, it also inhibits their success in the real world. Easy to send a link to their real world employers after they leave porn showing what they did. See, that's what I believe, Tiffany. The luxury companion might be trying to do to you. That way you can't, you know, if you choose to do your music or whatever, they're going to try to put out there that you were with the luxury companion, even though you weren't willingly in that world, not in my opinion, at least. Um, even Dennis Hoff told us to our, held us to our contract so he could keep us listed as, as, a, bunny as a bunny at the bunny ranch until the year was up. And even then, I had to write and insist they take it down since no longer, since they no longer had a contract to keep it posted. I would bet the performers are being told their contracts bind them as well, but we know it can't. You can't contract someone to commit illegal acts. So, I mean, the way that I'm looking at this whole luxury companion situation with you, um, the whole thing is illegal. And being that your images are still being utilized to draw traffic to that site, in my opinion, they are fraudulently marketing themselves. And um, I don't know if the individuals who run the Luxury Companion are in America, but you have a lawsuit against them. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eventually what I want to do is I, like, I really, really want to end these Ill illegal rings and stuff because it's, it's completely destroying the industry and it's just like you know people say that porn needs to be treated like a real industry well you know we need to do the stuff of acting like a real industry I agree and what uh, do you want to share your thoughts about unionizing because I did see that you were talking a bit about unionizing we need to be unionized simply because like no one like OSHA actually protects us I believe since we pay United States government you know, the United States government should be able to protect us because I called the, the California State Department um, last summer um, expressing my cries about Derek Hay and I'm like, look, you know, I'm stuck in this contract. I'm starving, you know, like I'm legally stuck in this contract and pretty much the government just like laughed at me and I'm just like, we need to be a union because OSHA doesn't even protect us against sexual harassment even on set. Mm. Mm. That's a shame. That's a shame. And not only that, OSHA doesn't protect us from people like um, you know, Manwin because, like I told you earlier, um, Reality Kings called up the producer here in um, Europe, and they pretty much told him like, we you can't you can't shoot Tiffany Fox tomorrow because she said a bunch of shit on Twitter talking bad about the company. Well, I looked into my Twitter, 
I definitely went down through. There is nothing negative about any main companies or reality kings. And I had my fans as well look through it too. And they started angrily tweeting at reality kings. And I just sat there. I'm like, dude, don't send a message just like that. Like, be nice, you know? Yeah, well, I actually yeah. looked through your Twitter myself to see if you... Uh, you didn't even say anything about reality kings. I believe that... Um, there's someone who has the agenda of trying to basically um, starve you again right now. You know, I yeah. saw a lot of girls writing some very slanderous and libelous um, statements about you on Twitter. I saw one young yeah. woman. Yeah, there's, look how much money I have. Like, this is how much money I have. And this is going to pay my rent to my friend's mom um, tomorrow. And then I just have 65 euros. Oh, gosh. So, you know, if, if you are a... I'm not even working that much as is. Yeah, if you're a company out there, you know, I personally think that Tiffany is talented enough to be a mainstream model or actress as well. I, if there's anyone out there in Europe who can get in contact with Tiffany to offer her some work at this point in time, it would be wonderful if you could do so. Yeah, I'm a reliable model, and I don't do drugs like every other bitch in the industry. Sorry, that's true. Yeah. I've seen girls sniffing coke on set, and, you know, these girls get major publications. Like, some of these girls are the biggest heroin and coke addicts, and yet they get all the publications. And then you have people like Presley Carter calling me a meth head and, like, starting to make all these false allegations about me and like I'm sorry but if you're gonna be making false allegations towards me at least do your grammar right and not sound like you're a white like like a, like a, a, I don't mean to a sound wigger. racist it's at fine all, a wicker is that what but she sounds <laughs> like a white girl trying to be black well I think that she is and actually I find this Presley Carter to be extremely offensive because she has a photo on her Twitter feed of a white woman holding a black baby and the little um, thing underneath says if you hold a black baby to your ear can you hear the ghetto yes that is what Presley Carter has on her Twitter yes she does and I screen capped it that's right I screen capped it because evidently she's a racist she's a racist that's what it comes down to Anyway, I have a question. Sure. Now, since I was contracted in pornography, we don't have anything that's health to protect us. Right. Well, I mean, we to be honest with you, in, there. in the Los Angeles porn industry at the For same time, you don't even know who really has HIV and who doesn't, considering that the STD and STI tests that the past um, centers or that the past testing um, approved clinics are utilizing allow for someone who has a low enough viral load to pass the test so there's no way for you to know until the government in my opinion can intervene and take control of the testing and until performers can be unionized it is not safe because you know you well you were saying to me earlier that you heard that um bell bell knox thought that i hated her i don't hate her i'm very concerned for that girl i think that she is being used to perpetuate propaganda and a lie of which your situation is completely contradicting. Bell Knox only knows the comfy, coddled side of porn, but what you are going through is the reality of porn. Oh, no, I, I mean, like, you know, she thinks what I'm doing is great and stuff like that. You know, I mean, a lot of women think what I'm doing is great, Good. but then again, the ones that think that I'm doing something that's evil are the ones like, She's going to be hurting my, my, my whoring money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, the reality is that if, if you want to be an escort, fine. But the escorting needs to be done within the legal brothel system. And also, there should not be a pimp or an opportunist involved who's utilizing the legal brothel system to take your money or to essentially pimp you but legally. Because that's what I believe is going on with that Ari that's exactly what's going and, on. I've heard so many stories about it and it's like mm -hmm. since this whole thing opened up I've had so many girls like 
send me emails and emails and it's just like I feel like my fingers are gonna be like falling off at some point because it's like I've been like through model mayhem actually working on my modeling career and um you know responding to those emails and then Twitter and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, well, um, I, I mean, at, at this phase, where, what do you think you, you are going to do from this point on? Now, earlier today, yourself, myself, and your attorney, we had a bit of a little morning meeting. And, um, oh, yes. You know, we, we talked about some things, but what, what do you think is going to happen from here? Do you want to continue? doing adult shoots, do you want to move more into mainstream, or do you, what do you want to do? Personally, at this point, because, like, I'm going to be honest, like, when I got into this industry, to now, mm -hmm. my opinion has completely changed about it. You know, there, there are really, really, really good people in porn, but it's just like, you know, I just think it's kind of sick that, like, someone people try to not book me shoots it's just like pretty much cancel shoots to silence me and it's just like you can't silence me until I'm fucking dead well don't say that I want you to live a very long life till you're like 300 years old okay <laughs> oh you know what though even if there are people coming after me because of this I wish them the best of luck to find me because it's like you know I just like got some emails I have um, a Greece trip I just booked I'm going to Greece I'm going to be going to Paris twice I'm going to Amsterdam twice I'm going to be going over to Vienna again and Germany and it's like you know in the USA I'm going to be all over the place too doing this press shit because it's like it's impossible to catch me but everyone please do support Tiffany Fox she's going through a lot you know she's been crying all day She's very, very upset about all of this and the level of bullying. I mean, I, I invite my audience to go onto Twitter and just go to search.twitter.com and type in at real Tiffany Fox and just look at the magnitude of the bullying, the cyber bullying that she is dealing with, the harassment. It's crazy. And if you, um, and what I do, I would like many of you to notice is that quite a bit of the bullying that she's dealing with is the ex are the exact same people that have been harassing me for the past three plus years. It's like they can't stop. It's it's just ridiculous. So, so um, is there anything else that you really wanted to um, put out there to the public in regards to everything that's going on? Well, since everything started and stuff, I've been getting more and more and more people attacking me online. But then again, I've been more and more people supporting me, especially um, especially the bands. Like, the bands have been, like, super fucking cool about it. Like, uh, I love how all of them actually have been extremely supportive. Yeah, you really have had a huge outpouring of support, which is excellent. But what I can also say, too, with uh, the porn industry and escorts, you know, I find it really fucking disturbing that when, um, you know, I request to wear a condom, um, the company pretty much will say back to me, like, oh, well, we'll find someone else then. Mm-hmm. And we don't, I mean, personally, you know, um, with the whole condom law, I do believe it should be the performer's choice, 100%. But, you know, like, I personally want to wear a condom because I don't feel safe in my own industry because people are not responsible with their sex life. And you know what? That really has been the main point is that there are many in the industry who are not responsible in their own sex lives. I do believe that some of the Free Speech Coalition mouthpieces that um, have said what they said, I, I believe that they really believe what they're saying. But then again, they're often people who are very pampered within the industry, and not everyone's a contract girl. I mean, you're, in my opinion, you're a prime example of someone who I would have thought would have been a contract girl, but that's not the reality. Your reality... No, the reality is I'm, I'm standing in the nosebleed section of um, the baseball stadium with a foam finger and a football flag. <laughs> versus being on the playing field where I should be.
Well, I think that your playing field is actually going to be within mainstream entertainment. I hope that um, there are some savvy mainstream entertainment people out there who are listening to your story and who realize that you're, not only your story is incredibly marketable to launch a mainstream career for you, but you're just very talented. You're very talented, and I do believe that a lot of things are blessings in disguise. And even though you're going through a very difficult time right now, and, um, you know, we're not even talking about everything that we could be talking about today, because I, I do want you to, um, most of this is for you to tell, not for me to tell. But um, I think that this is just a blessing in disguise for you. I think that this is something that's very hard right now, but you're a very strong young woman. You're very smart, and you're going to be just fine. That's how I feel, and I just think it's wonderful now that the public realizes that there is another side to everything that um, young women such as Belle Knox has been saying. I believe that Belle Knox believes everything that she said, but she hasn't walked in your shoes, and that's really all that there is to it. Oh, you know, she's a very sweet girl, and she's also really young, you know, like, I wasn't at this mentality when I was, like, 19 even, so, mm -hmm. you know, like, that's the thing, too, with the whole prostitution rings and the young women and stuff, is uh, the young mind is extremely vulnerable. Yes, well, and, you know, um, what's her name, uh, I can't think of her name right now, but she's a Playboy radio host. Simone Bien. Simone Bien actually was very concerned for Belle Knox as well in regards to her age. And she took to her her um, radio show cast and was saying that she thinks that Belle Knox is extremely young, possibly too young to be doing what she's doing. And um, Belle Knox was very upset about that. And I understand that, she, you know, it, it probably did hurt her feelings because in her mind, what she's doing is... Is, is an okay thing to do but she's just so young and I know how I was thinking when I was 19 I know how I was thinking when I was your age Tiffany I, I know how I was just thinking like three years ago even four years ago five years ago and you, you really do evolve and change and I you know I I'm so proud of you because I feel like you saw what was going on and you made the conscientious decision to say, okay, wait, this has to stop now. And oh, my music mentor, I mean, I, I'm not going to say his, his name um, mm -hmm. publicly on this and stuff like that just because, you know, I don't want him to get upset. Uh, my old music mentor, he, he always told me to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, even though we don't talk anymore and stuff like that, he left me with very, very... Um, important lessons and morals and you know I've carried al them along with me and you know I, I see how successful he is and like you know finishing doing compilation like god like ever so often a new album like two new albums like every year and stuff like he's a very hard working man and then he tells me you know do the right thing you know don't sell your morals don't sell your soul and, you know, he's absolutely right. No, you, I, I agree with that. And, you know, that's really, um, it seems to be the main theme here is not selling your soul, retaining your soul, you know, realizing that you do have to fight for your soul. And when I look at this whole luxury companion situation, I feel that whoever's behind it is um, violating your spiritual rights as a human being. Really, that's yeah, what, exactly. Yeah, that's what's going on here, and um, they need to take your entry off of that website now. Karen and Dave, whoever you are, if you're if you're watching this, delete that page from your site. It would take two seconds for you to do so. Log in to whatever your hosting is, and delete Tiffany Fox from your site because you cannot have her anymore. It's over. Let her go. And anyone else who's on that site who doesn't need to be on that site, let them go. Because yeah, if the cat's so out of the bag now. Yeah, the cat's out of the bag. 
everyone knows what is going on there's no changing this now it's not about anyone having credibility it's not about like i've said before i'd rather be incredible than have credibility because there's plenty of people with phenomenal educations who have the background who have the credibility who are watching this live right now who are getting ready to do some things well there's all it's, it's like the same thing you know that people that go to the christian and catholic churches you know they think they're all high and mighty because you know they think they're all fucking godly and shit and then it's like you know in reality they're the most evil people ever like that's personally why i stopped going to church <laughs> You know, I, I mean, anyone can be whatever religion they want to be, but when it comes to just human rights, I mean, this entire situation in regards to you, Tiffany, in my view, I actually, I spoke to my dad about this last night, I spoke to my aunt about this last night, and my mom called me during the break, and I need to call her back after the show, but this has to do with civil rights. This has to do with civil rights, because that luxury companion, in my opinion, that is not just sex trafficking but it is essentially slavery i feel like your presence on that site as of current could affect your future um that's why they need to go ahead and take that listing down because who knows what job opportunities you'll have you know between tomorrow and the rest of your life no one you don't need to be on, on there you've made a choice to where you're moving forward whether you move forward in adult entertainment or mainstream entertainment or maybe something completely outside of entertainment. But, um, yeah, you're exactly. done with that. I mean, like, you don't realize, like, you know, leaving that link up there, you know, I can get a really big contract with a music label or whatever, and then they can pull up that shit, and, you know, there goes everything I've dedicated the last 10 years of my life to. You know, I, th I thought I knew some of the things that were going on, but apparently I don't know everything, so... Anyway, um, let's go ahead and conclude this webcast. Thank you so much for coming on here with me today, Tiffany. I I'll be back. Uh, I'm sure you will. 